In this video, we will be going over the dimension tools. The dimension tools allow you to display measurements in your drawing. And if you would like to follow along, download the file by following the URL found in this video's description. First, let's bring up the dimensions toolbar. Right click a blank spot in the workspace and check dimensions in the toolbars tab. Now bring up the design director by hitting F3 on your keyboard. Notice in the views section, the different named views. We will be using these to navigate the drawing. Let's start by checking the boundary view. Orthogonal creates horizontal or vertical dimensions. Let's try it out by snapping to the bottom left, then top left corners of the polyline. Notice the difference if I move my mouse above the polyline or to the left of it. After dropping the dimension, we will notice that the dimension is displaying the vertical measurement and not the distance between the two points. Let's add a parallel dimension, snapping to the same two points so we can see the difference. Notice that the parallel dimension is placed parallel to the two endpoints and displays the distance between them. A better use case for the parallel dimension tool is segment dimensioning. You can turn on segment dimensioning in the local menu or inspector bar. Then it's as simple as picking a line segment and dropping the dimension. Rotated dimensions are similar to parallel with the exception that the dimension can be placed at a variable angle. When placing a rotated dimension, you first specify the direction of the extension lines by placing two points. Then you can either pick two points for measurement or select a segment. Baseline, continuous, and incremental all work off an existing dimension. To see them in action, let's first place an orthogonal dimension snapping to the bottom corners of the entity on screen, being sure segment dimensioning is turned off. Baseline creates a series of dimensions measuring the distance from the first point to the point chosen. Continuous places dimensions measuring the distance between the chosen points sequentially. Use the Edit tool to reposition the baseline dimension. Incremental is similar to baseline but places dimension text perpendicular to the chosen baseline dimension. Let's move on to the hex circle view and take a look at the angle, radius, and diameter dimension tools. Note that it's best to have snaps turned off when using these tools. Angle measures the angle between two line segments. Let's try it out on the hexagon. Simply choose two line segments, then drop the dimension. Radius and diameter both work by choosing circle or arcs, then placing the dimension. Go ahead and place one of each, then let's go over some of the options and properties. For the radius dimension, let's check Force Text Horizontal under Format. And for diameter, let's add an interior line under Advanced Format. Now switch to the view named Profile so we can go over the Quick and Smart Dimension tools. Quick dimensions place multiple dimensions of a specific type measuring the selected entities. For example, let's choose Radius, select all the entities on screen, then hit the Finish flag. The Smart Dimension tool takes a guess at which dimension tool to use based on the entity you select. Selecting line segments will place an orthogonal dimension. Selecting circles will measure their diameter, and selecting arcs will measure their radius. We have gone over using all of our dimension tools on basic 2D entities. What about 3D entities, architectural entities, or placing dimensions in paper space? While the use of the tools is basically the same, there are some other things to keep in mind. Switch over to the floor plan view so we can check them out. Start out by placing an orthogonal dimension along the bottom wall. Looks like we just got a bunch of lines. That brings us to our first problem, scale. Let's delete this dimension, then go into Dimension Properties by right-clicking the Orthogonal Dimension tool. Go into Format and change the Dimension Size Scale to 48. This is an appropriate scale for most residential floor plans. Let's go ahead and choose different arrowheads too. Before we are done, go into General Properties and create a new property value preset, naming it Arc 48.
There we go. Now we can see the dimensions. We can also place dimensions in a 3D view. The trick here is using the correct work plane. Select the floor plan isometric southwest view, then switch to a hidden line rendering. Now bring up the local menu and choose work plane by three points from the pop-up toolbar. Snap to the bottom left corner for the origin, the bottom right corner for the X axis, and the top left for the Y. Now switch to the floor plan west elevation view and try placing some dimensions. If for some reason dimensions are upside down or backwards, then the work plane was created incorrectly. These dimensions can also be placed in paper space. There is no need to scale these dimensions, so let's switch back to normal dimensions. We will also need to delete the existing dimensions, so switch to southwest view and delete any of the dimensions you see. Okay, now switch to the floor plane layout and place some dimensions. Notice that the measurements displayed reflect the entity's real size and model space and not the measurements seen on the rulers. We can see similar results in the west elevation layout. No need to switch the work plane here. Notice when I select the dimension that the rest of the entities highlight blue. This is because the dimension is associative to this view, so any changes made to the entities in this view will update the measurements. And that's about it for this video. For more great videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have not already, please download the latest version of TurboCAD from TurboCAD.com today.